All right, guys, real quick, before we start this video, as you guys may know, the one year anniversary of this channel is coming very, very soon. Um, today is January 31st. I believe this video will be going up on the 1st of February. And February 5th is my one year anniversary of this channel. Please let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see a live stream. We'll do a little Q&A, just have some fun, try to run some trains. I'll take a little break from scenery. I'll let everything set and dry just so we don't have to worry about uh, little rocks or foam getting in the gears of the engines. But let me know what you guys think of that idea. I'm not 100% sure on the time, but I'll keep you guys posted. And we're, without a further ado, we're going to jump right into this little layout tour. Enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. This is Preston from the PGK Railway coming at y'all with another video today. What do we got going on? Well, we're going to be addressing the changes to the table. As you guys, if you guys have watched my last video, you may have seen that there is now grass, trees, rocks. And the table is actually coming to life. We got the ground foam down. We have, uh, as you guys can see, started putting some ballast down. But what I want to do in this video is I'm just going to walk you guys through the progress that has been made and try to explain my plans for the table as best as I can. So I'm not sure if I ever actually came out and publicly said it on YouTube, but my initial plan for this table was post-war dealer display. Keep it simple, show off some trains, just have fun with it. And then after the progression of my collection just kept expanding and then we got some new stuff, we got a big boy, we got a lot of MTH PS2, PS3, we got a Shea, we got a Zephyr. Kind of le started leaning away a little bit from post-war and more towards the newer stuff that's a little more realistic looking. And that got me to thinking, what would be a good, how should I do my table? Well, after putting a lot of thought and effort into it and me being a big scenery nut, I absolutely love doing scenery. It's one of my favorite things to do in this hobby. I decided, you know what, we're going to scrap the post-war dealer display idea and we're going to go with something a little bit more realistic and but we're gonna still keep it fun and toy train themed yes are we yes um unfortunately there will not be any operating big post-war style operating accessories but there is going to be buildings at some point i will invest in some signals i have uh, z stuff z stuff crossing gates that are actually off getting work done right now because i bought them at trains by johnson before they went out of business and got home only for them to not work out of the box so I got in contact with the manufacturer. They're up there right now in Illinois getting uh, worked on. But yeah, this is just going to be a simple little layout overview and update. And unfortunately, we're not going to be running any trains because there is some ballast right about here and a little bit in the back that is still wet and drying. And I'd prefer not to get wet ballast with uh, glue up in the gears of my locomotives. So without further ado, we're just going to jump right on in and I'm going to explain to you guys what all I've done to the table. So I figured if I'm going to start talking about scenery on this table, there is one section that really stands out as just being full of stuff and looking nice. And that would be this corner back here. Ever since I decided that I was going to go with a more realistic approach, I decided I want to have a small little tiny like forest area. I know I don't have a whole lot of space to work with for making a big in-depth forest. But what you guys see here... um. These little trees right here, we got them at a yard sale or found them on Facebook Marketplace a long time ago. They're just wire trees. They have a little wooden circular base on them. And uh, these were taken off. My mom actually decided that she wanted to help with scenery and painted a few of the trees. So they're different colors because they are very harsh, very like bright lime green color. About the same color as this, but when you have a ton of them, it definitely... It's a little overpowering for a scene when you want a forest with a lot of different colors, different shades... So yeah, this this scene right here is literally just going to be a little forest. And at some point, there will be a mountain a little bit further back on the table. But I do plan on, in this corner right here, I will show you guys a little close-up of this, of what I'm planning on doing. But I am going to put a little hobo camp. So if we get a little bit closer to this uh, section of the table, you guys can see I have started putting down a little path. And there's a little clearing in the trees. And at some point, I will be getting some uh, Woodland Scenics hobos and putting them in there. And then I uh, found out my local hobby shop, Terry Tucker's Train Supply, actually has an LED kit to make a flickering fire. So I'm going to try to make a little fire pit, put a little hobo scene in there. This side, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing yet, but there is a little pathway coming out, going uh, kind of making a V-shape splitting. 
not 100% sure what I'm doing yet, but we're just kind of going with the flow with this table. I have gone a little overboard with scenery. As you guys can see, this is my little special uh, ballast blend. I got to hit, uh, hit it with glue one more time just to make sure everything does fully set. But I'm extremely happy with how this track is turning out. This is just standard K-Line 042 curbs. Found some uh, ties on Amazon and mixed a bunch of Woodland Scenics ballast together to get a very nice looking realistic ballast. I might go over it with a black wash at some point. I'm not 100% sure. We're just playing around with it once again, seeing what looks good and what works. So this corner is probably 90% complete. I might add a little bit more touch up work, make it a little bit more hyper detailed. We're just gonna see what happens and see what uh, scenic stuff I do end up finding at the hobby shops or online. But yeah, this pretty much covers the uh, back corner of the table. And so moving on from this corner, we come to this corner. One of the few spots on the table that does not have any ground foam. Also guys, if you wanna see how I've been filming all these videos, this light has been my best friend. Um, yeah, we're in a garage, so the lighting is not the best. So I've been using this for filming everything. Um, I did get some small lights that uh, were recommended to me to put on the uh, ceiling up here above the garage door. They, I'm not, I don't want to go crazy with the lighting. So they're literally just uh, little LED cabinet lights that have magnets. So all I got to do is attach a strip of metal to the ceiling and then I can just uh, stick them right in place and we'll be good to go. So hopefully that'll give us some better lighting and it is uh, multicolor lighting. So hopefully we can get some different moods going on on the table. But enough rambling about that. Back to this corner. So as you guys can see, this corner is barren. Yes, there's a lot of holes from when I had the uh, Christmas display. I'm still trying to figure out how to fill in all these holes all over the table. But this right here is where I'm planning once I get my uh, Z stuff signals back. I'm going to be doing a little grade crossing scene right here. I don't want to go too crazy with ground cover, so I'm leaving it kind of barren right now. Just because I am going to do a road, I'm probably going to pour... Um, the Woodland Scenics Road stuff. I can't think of what it's called right now. But I will more than likely be doing that. So we're keeping this bare for now just because there is going to be a lot of wiring and hooking up and then doing a road and all that. I don't know how well if I pour a road, how well it's going to actually react to being on ground foam. So for now, we're just going to play it safe, keep it a little bit barren. But yeah, that's just, that's what this corner is going to be. All right, so now coming off of the front corner and following the tracks... We're going to go all the way across to that corner, but we're gonna go back a little bit. We're gonna focus on the switches. So this right here, this is just a little bit of hodgepodge, miscellaneous scenery, just to spruce it up. It's one of my favorite things to do when I do scenery is hyper detailing, but nothing really planned for this yet. So we're gonna move on and we're going to be focusing on where all the gravel is. This is a big mixture of gravel that I just kind of played around with until I got something that I was happy with how it looks. And not 100% sure what I'm going to do here. I think I might go for like a freight unloading platform right about here. Not 100% sure. Everything is still up in the air with this table. I will make that disclaimer right now. But this right here, this is my first ever kit that I have built. And this is a Korber sanding house. This is, a, I believe, an early Korber kit. Now, I will say this kit was way too much fun to build. Um... I actually ended up finding it at Terry Tucker's train supply out by the uh, house. And uh, while looking at it at the store, I realized it was missing some pieces. And so he decided to just throw it in for free. And I got back, probably spent six or seven hours on this. Everything is custom painted. Um, tried a little bit of uh, dry brushing on the wood on it and dry brushing the actual roof of the building. Just kind of playing around with different scenery techniques to weather and just try to get and understand how to um, kit bash, scratch build, just have fun with it and see what I was able to do. So for my very first attempt at doing anything like this, I am extremely happy with how it turned out. I think this is an absolutely awesome building. I know this kit is probably 30 years old at least. It's a great little kit. It was a lot of fun. It was definitely a challenge, but it was still fun. So for this section of the table, the only thing I have planned is I'll get a uh, water spout for, or a water column, I can't think of what they're called, for right about here just to have it match up with the sanding tower. Uh, all right, so moving away from the actual quote unquote yard scene, we're gonna be moving to the other front corner of the table, which this plot of land right here, this is definitely undecided. I have no idea what I'm doing yet. I might do a little farm scene, might put a 
burning building. I'm not 100% sure yet. So we're going to keep following these double track main lines and we're going to go right about here. Now right here, I will try to make a custom uh, tunnel portal that is wide enough to actually fit both of my tracks and have a mountain that comes up, goes all the way across to right about there. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the mountain yet, but I do want to do an elevated town in the back just so I can still show off some of the buildings that I have and make a fun little town scene. So all the scenery in that back corner, that's just filler scenery until the mountain is started. But before I do that, I gotta do all the ballasting, which um, this ballasting is taking quite a while. But this is as this is how the table stands as of the 31st of January, 2023. We've come a long way since I started this YouTube channel on February 5th of uh, 2022. And guys, I know this isn't the best video ever, but this is something just so you guys still have content coming out to you and you guys understand what is actually happening to the table. So this is a quick little look at my Lionel 4x8 table. Well guys, I think that's gonna about do it for the, today's video. I know, nothing crazy exciting, no trains running, none of that goodness. I just wanted to keep you guys updated and informed on what was actually going on with the table. It is undergoing a full makeover instead of brown paint with random patches of green. We now have almost the entire table covered in green. We're starting to add trees. Um, I think I forgot to mention, but the trees on that corner, it is a Scenic Express Super Kit. I think it was $40 for 20 trees. It's a German manufacturer. I can't think of the name right now. And the box is put up somewhere. I don't remember exactly where I put it. And then the big tall conifer trees are actually Bachman Scenescapes, I think is what they're called. I'm not 100% sure. But guys, I promise the regular train action will continue uh, next week. We do have a post-war unboxing next week. Um, I got these trains actually from somebody who is very near and dear to me. He kept me in the hobby. He was the one who basically kindled the fire when I was younger into why I have such a strong passion for these trains, and especially the old trains. And he is actually, unfortunately, stepping out of the business. At the time that this video is being recorded, he is officially done and out. He sold everything that he had left at auction, walked away with a good chunk of change. And so now these are the last trains that he sold that I was very fortunate to get some great engines and that will be coming out next week. But guys, I just wanna say thank you so much. I'm sorry for the lack of shorts and just the overall lack of content. It's hard to make content when I'm also trying to redo the table and make it look nice and fancy and doing some wiring. But guys, I hope you guys are able to understand that. And we'll definitely, I'll definitely make it up to you guys at some point. Um, there is a train show in March. There's not a whole lot of train shows in my area. Otherwise, I would be going to them more and more to uh, give you guys content and try to make the content a little bit different. I'll have to talk to uh, Terry from Terry Tucker's Trains and see what he thinks about doing a video of his store just so I can get it out there and kind of promote his store. Because he has an awesome store with a lot of great stuff. Literally everything from Z to G, I kid you not, he's got everything. He might be a little lackluster on the S gauge side. He's starting to get a little bit more O gauge. But guys, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys next time and we'll see you in the post-war unboxing. Have a good one.